In this fourth episode, let's model. We model a metal folding chair that is perfect to be used as a prop. And here's what we end up creating. Now there's quite a few modeling techniques that we use. One of them is extruding along a curve to create the curvature of the chair here at the top. And we also work just on half of the model and then we mirror it to the other side. And of course, throughout this entire process, I periodically export this into Unreal Engine 5 just so we can gauge the size and the dimensions of this prop. So we know we are modeling everything to proper dimensions and proportion. So let's begin modeling a metal folding chair. Before we begin with this episode, if you want to learn Maya modeling and UV as a complete beginner without any prior knowledge in 3D modeling or UV, I have a home study tutorial course that will teach you how. It has over 65 videos and it spans 18 hours and explains everything you need to know for how to start using modeling and UV with Maya. You'll find the link in the description box or if you're watching through worldlevelldesign.com website, you'll find the link to the course there as well. First, we're gonna begin with the size of the chair and we need to establish the bounded box within which this chair will fit. So you don't wanna start modeling anything yet until you get that correct dimension and proportion of the object first of the prop. So I looked up some dimensions for this folding chair and here are the values we're going to use. And I'm gonna work with them. I'm not gonna use them exactly because some of these values, if you use them as they are from the real world, props tend to look very small inside the game engine. So I'm gonna blow them up a little bit to make uh, the object a little bulkier. And I'm also going to be referencing this shot as well as I model. So I'll have it on the side of the screen. Uh, you should always look at a photo reference that you're going to model too. So I already collected a bunch of photo references of this uh, metal folding chair, and I'm gonna be using them on my second monitor looking at it as I model. So I'm gonna begin with a bounded box to establish the size of uh, where we're going to model the chair in. So I'm gonna start with a cube, and I'm gonna set my baseline to negative one, so it's on top of the ground plane. And I'm gonna input the values from the dimensions that I researched and I found and then uh, I'll tweak them based on uh, how big the box will be. So the width is 46 centimeters, the height is 78, and the depth is 51. And just by looking at it next to the play reference scale, it's already, it's too small. So I'm gonna pump up these values a little bit more to get that bounded box and our initial chair, uh, it'll be bigger than the real world dimensions. So I'm gonna use for width, Let's go to 50 for height, let's go up to 80. And for depth, let's do 55. And uh, the chair, the cushion of the chair is right at a halfway point, about 43 centimeters. So I'm gonna use a multi-cut for this and just insert a, an edge right in the center. So that's where the chair, the half of the chair will be, the seat itself. All right, let's go back to object mode. And this is gonna be our uh, kind of bounded box. And inside this bounded box is where the chair is going to be created. So I'm going to select this and I'm gonna place it on its own layer. I'm gonna name this layer, let's do a bounded box. Save it. And let me go ahead and place it. So this way I'll be able to lock it, but I'll still see the wireframe. Something like this. All right, so we have a bounded box. And now I wanna go ahead and start using basic primitive shapes and get the chair blacked out. This will not be beginning of modeling process, but I'm just gonna use the simple shapes such as cylinders and cubes to establish the dimensions of the actual chair that we will begin to model. So let's begin with the blackout of the chair. I'm gonna introduce another cube and I'm gonna start resizing. This is gonna be the middle portion where the ch uh, chair, the seat itself is going to be. So I'm just going to use this template, this bounded box as my reference, as my guide to how big I need in width and then height and everything else I need to make uh, the blackout for the chair. And let's make that bigger, something like that. So as long as I stay within this bounding box, I uh, should be good with uh, the size and then we'll just establish the thickness of the cylinders and the chair itself with our blackout. And then we'll use that blackout as our modeling guide, as our modeling template later. So again, this is not the modeling process. We are blocking things out. So don't worry about any overlap or any bad geometry. 
you're essentially using uh, primitive shapes to get the size of the chair down and all of its components. So something like this, that should be good. Good start. And then let's do a cylinder. And uh, let me take a look at the cylinder because uh, that probably needs to be a little bit thicker. So let's start at uh, maybe radius 1.5. And let's do negative one for height balance. And let's establish the height. And that might be a little bit too thick, but let's just put it to the side within our bounding box and just see what it looks like in terms of the thickness for the legs. Yeah, and this might be too thick. So let's go down to radius of one. This is a very freely uh, flexible process. Uh, you just basically punch in the numbers, trying to establish that size. So let's go maybe 1.25, a little bit thicker. So the bottom of the leg is going to start here. And then uh, let's do just move the verts and then maybe rotate the verts. Actually, I don't like how uh, whenever you are trying to move the verts, you see how small the cylinder gets. So actually, I don't want to do that. I'm actually I'm going to rotate this instead like so to keep the thickness of the cylinder. And let's push it up here and I'm just going to scale it all the way up to that top corner. Something like that. That might be a little bit too far back. Maybe I'll just go a little bit higher. Something like that. And that might be pretty good. I think I like the thickness of this. And uh, let me duplicate it for the other side and place it right there. Again, just keeping the inside the bounding box. And then I'm gonna make another duplicate. Let's rotate it up. I'll move it up and then I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees. So it's uh, that's gonna be our kind of the curve for the top. It's gonna be this piece right here. Uh, I'm not gonna, again, I'm not trying to do any modeling. I just wanna kind of black out where that top piece will be and that's it. And then we'll uh, eventually uh, use some of the modeling techniques. Uh, very likely, not very likely, but we will uh, extrude along the curve to get that shape. All right now, let me just get that top down. Um, I'm gonna type in some values into rotate. That's 90 degrees. Let's uh, rotate on X to zero. And let's use that side view and just position that at the top like so. And let's just move the verts and just kind of see what it looks like. Then uh, let's take another one of these legs and I'm going to duplicate it again. Let's rotate it and that's going to be that by the back portion. Let me go to side view. And let's go ahead and scale this down. So it just kind of overlaps. So that's going to be that part in the back, the legs in the back that connect up to the main portion in the front. And let's uh, duplicate it for the other side like so. All right, let me just kind of uh, zoom out and just take a look at what the shape of this and the size of this is compared to my scale reference right next to it. So I think this is pretty good. Let me just kind of move it closer. Um, it's a little too small. You can see that it, uh, the bottom portion kind of goes up to the calf. Yeah, it's very small. Actually, uh, let me move the scale reference a little closer. I'll move these both. So that way uh, we can judge a lot more. And uh, I, when I get the size down, I'll probably also export this template, this blackout into UE5 so I can see it from player's point of view as well. But I'm already seeing it that this is a little too small for my liking. So let's uh, raise this up, maybe up to here, maybe even higher. Maybe a little lower. And then let's adjust kind of the sizes a little bit more. So I'm going to select these two and I'm just going to make that a little taller. So now I'm going outside the bounding box that I had because I'm just looking at it from uh, right next to the player and it's just way too small. So maybe that needs to be a little bit bigger, taller. So just imagine that you would sit down and usually these chairs are they're not coming up to the calf, to the knee area. That might be right about at right the knee length, maybe slightly bigger. That's a little bit better. Let me go ahead and select these two. So this is a blackout process. That's an important part of this process because you're trying to still get the size correct. And if I went ahead and started modeling, then uh, I, I would run into problems for the dimensions of the chair. Um, let's go ahead and actually take these and just move them. Let me try selecting them both. And let's uh, select all the birds, move them up a little bit. Select that one, move that one up. 
probably get the thickness a little bit bigger for the cylindrical parts when I, uh, when we begin to modeling. Uh, 1.25 might be a little too small, so maybe it'll go higher in thickness. Let's uh, make this chair a tiny little bit smaller so it fits within this. And let's push it back a little bit. All right, that's a little bit better. Let me go ahead and uh, also quickly black out the top portion. So I'm just gonna use this cube, rotate this, and position it for that very top uh, kind of resting area for the back. So let me rotate this. I'm gonna make this smaller and scale it down like so and just put it all the way to the top right here. Let's take a look from the front and let's make that even bigger like so. Let's go to side view, just arrange it, align it. All right, much better. I think the taller uh, size for this helps. Maybe I'll even get it down smaller. I think it might be now too tall. So let me just uh, make an adjustment. Uh, the more time you can spend in this process, the better, because uh, this will be used for our modeling process. So we'll uh, kind of keep true to the dimensions of our blackout. So you don't want to rush through this process because everything will be built on top. Yeah, I think that's better. Let's uh, lower this a little bit more like so. All right, at this point, I wanna go ahead and just take this entire chair uh, and um, I don't need to combine it because I'm gonna export it as FBX and uh, all the pieces will be already combined. And we'll export this and uh, bring it over to UE5 very quick to test, to see it from player's point of view. So I'm just gonna select these. Uh, let's do export selection. And I'm just going to just place it into a folder that I've been working with for the modular sci-fi set. And it's gonna be our prop. So let's do a folding chair underscore and export this as FBX. With all the previous settings that uh, if you've been watching all the episodes, it's a FBX export with smoothing groups on, smooth mesh on, and let's go ahead and export this. All right, here in UE5, I already have a set constructed to where I'm gonna start placing these props. And I already have a skill reference similar as I have in Maya, and then we'll be able to spawn. So I'm gonna go ahead and import this blackout and it will also establish the connection to UE5. So then I can go ahead and constantly re-import to update this chair with any modeling that we do in the future as we go forward. So I'm just gonna take that chair that I just exported. Let's import it into my static mesh folder. Uh, all the properties are gonna be kept the same as the other episodes. So I'm not changing anything here. And let's just go ahead and put a chair right there. So that looks pretty good. Let's uh, spawn from first person point of view. That's pretty good size. I like this, feels right. I'm also going to uh, switch over to the third person and let's spawn as a third person and just see how it looks. Yeah, that this is pretty good. I'm very happy with the dimensions of this. So that's, that's what we're gonna keep. And this is now our blackout chair that we will use as a template to begin modeling the actual chair. I'm gonna select the blackout and I will place it on its own layer. So this way we can begin modeling to this. So we no longer need the bounding box and this is what we're going to model to. So this will be our blackout template. And let's save and let's go ahead and lock it. All right, and I no longer need the bounding box. So I'm just gonna turn it off. So I will now start with uh, the main piece of geometry this leg right here that cur curves around at the top and comes back down on the other side. So for this, the way we're going to model this is we need to create a curve and then we're gonna create the cylinder and extrude that cylinder along the curve. Very common method of getting curved geometry. I'm gonna use an EP curve. So we will go to create curve tools and create an EP curve. And let's go ahead and start drawing. I'm gonna go on the side view and I'm gonna start drawing the curve going all the way up. And then let's go to side view or front view and then just continue. So right now I'm just drawing the curve and I'm only gonna do half because I will mirror to the other side. And of course it's not gonna be perfect but I'll just create the curve right now. Make sure it's selected and then go to control vertices. And here I can go ahead and begin to move these control vertices and rework this shape. Now, if I have too many curves, I can delete those curves or those points and kind of simplify the curve. Uh, but first, let me go ahead and uh, drag this 
entire curve where it needs to go first. So I need this line to be more straight. So let's go back to control vertices. And let's move this one. So actually, I'm going to raise this one all the way up. So I have a more of a straight curve on the bottom, uh, from bottom all the way to the top. Uh, there's too many control points here. So I'm just going to start deleting them and simplifying this. And let's take this one. Actually, let me undo. Uh, I'll keep that one. And I'll just drag this one back. This one right here, I'm actually going to drag it and then I'm going to snap it right along this grid. So that's going to be our halfway point, our half to the right, and then we'll mirror it to the left. So I'm going to hold down X and just drag it left to right on X to snap it to that center line. And then let's take this one and just drag it back. This one, I can actually lower it like so. Let's take this one, lower it a little bit more. And again, I am looking over to my reference as I'm looking at this to see how, how much of a curve that this needs to be. And I think that that's pretty, pretty good right there. Let's drag this one back. So this line right here is a little bit more straight, like so, maybe slowly up. All right, so that's gonna be our curve. Let's uh, modify it on the side. So I'm gonna take this one and I'm just gonna drag it back. And it's not straight at all here. So the way I will do this uh, to make sure it is straight, I'm gonna select all the vertices or the control vertices and I'm gonna scale them on a single axis to make them straight. And this one I'll just move back. And then let's move this one forward. And let's uh, scale them again. Now let's just again also reposition some of these to get that curve uh, a little bit more in a straight line using our template, our blackout template. And that looks pretty good, that looks pretty straight. Uh, let's go ahead and just uh, work with this one right here at the top. Let's move this one back or forward. Again, just trying to get that line, that curve a little bit more straight. Because once I extrude, that's going to be our shape that uh, the cylinder is going to get extruded on. So I want to make sure it's uh, looking good. Otherwise, our shape is going to look off as well. Let me go ahead and uh, hit wireframe 4 just to see it, see how the curve looks. All right, that's looking pretty good. Let's go to front view. Yep, that's good. I think we're ready to create a cylinder along which we will extrude. So let's go back to perspective and I'm going to create a cylinder. I'm going to keep the cylinder at uh, subdivision axis, not keep it. I'm going to lower it. I'm not going to keep it at 20. So I don't need 20 subdivisions. So let's go down to 16 and I could probably go down to even 12. Let's do that. 12 should be enough for us. And then let's uh, position the cylinder right at where the curve began. So I started drawing the curve at the bottom and we ended at the top. So that's where I'm going to extrude from the bottom where the curve began. Otherwise, it's going to uh, fold onto itself. So now I'm going to position the cylinder right at the bottom, right where the curve begins. And I can actually snap that to the bottom right at the center vertex. So I can uh, take this cylinder and I'm gonna, I can modify the pivot point to be right at there at the top. And then I can take that pivot point and I can hold C, middle mouse click and drag to snap along the curve. And that way it'll be right in the center. And then when it extruded, it's going to look pretty good. And it's going to be evenly extruded along that curve because our cylinder is right there, right in the center. And I actually also want to make my cylinder a little bit bigger. We created this cylinder, I think 1.25. So I want to set my radius to one point. Actually, I want it bigger, 1.3. A little thicker. And once I extrude, I can uh, kind of take a look and see if I need to redo it. But I think that's pretty good. And also, I want to change my edges to a soft edge. All right, now I am ready to extrude. So I'm going to hide the blackout template. And the way you extrude along the curve, is we have our curve, we have our geometry. I'm going to select the faces that I want to extrude, which are going to be just the faces at the top. Those get selected first. Then you hold down shift and add to a selection, the curve, which is second. And then once you have those in that order selected, you can extrude control E and it will extrude all the way up. Now there's not enough 
divisions, so just add divisions. Let's do about 10. And take a look at the shape. And I think that is looking good. Let's take a look at the front view. Let's bring it back our template. If I need to adjust the curve, I can do so and it will uh, update the shape. So let me uh, select the curve and uh, just kind of tweak the shape a little bit. So it's kind of hard to see what the curve is. Uh, let's go to perspective and I'm going to hit four for wireframe and select the curve. And then I can switch over to control vertices, select the vertices and just kind of modify the shape uh, or move the curve control point and it will modify the shape like so. Let's go back to shaded mode, five. And I'm going to take this shape that we created. The center line is right here and the vertices should be right along that. And it looks like the vertices are solidly off. So I'm going to take those verts and I'm going to make sure I scale them to make them completely flat. And then I want to make sure that I'm snapping right in the center line. That's our world origin. So this is where I'm going to mirror a lawn on the world origin to the other side. And let me just kind of move this down a little bit. So we no longer need that curve if you like the shape and you like the, th the thickness. Uh, we no longer need to modify it. So I'm going to go ahead and delete history on it. But I will keep my curve just in case if I need to redo the shape again. And then let's go ahead and mirror to the other side. So I'm going to make sure I have the shape selected. Let's go to mesh mirror options. And because I know that I'm mirroring on the world axis, I'm going to change the mirror axis position to world instead of an object. I'm going to mirror this on X. So it's going to go to the left on X axis. And then the mirror direction has to be negative because uh, anytime you see a narrow point pointing towards the direction, that's a positive direction. And the opposite of that is a negative direction. So I'm change, I need to change this to negative. And then if I apply, it should mirror to the other side perfectly. And let me hide the blackout so I can see that shape. And that's looking pretty good. Let's actually turn this to a wireframe template. So I can still see it, but it's not kind of hiding our model. Let's fix the bottom and also introduce the little add a little extra detail here at the bottom of uh, the cylinder. And I'm actually thinking that uh, I duplicated and mirrored to the other side too soon because uh, I don't want to have to do this to both sides. So I think uh, we need to stick to one side first and then mirror, especially when we include this detail right here. So with that, actually, I'm going to go ahead and select the faces and I'm going to delete half. And let me go to front view and make sure that these are right on the grid line. So that's going to be my half on one side. So I know it's working. So, but now I've kind of jumped, jumped a little too soon into the mirroring process. So let's go ahead and uh, select the faces in the bottom. Let's delete them and then select the verts and let's uh, make sure they are snapped on top of the grid, on top of the ground plane. And then uh, let's go ahead and introduce, actually before I do that, because the front and the back, they're very similar in size and the amount of detail. So let's create this back like first, and then that way we can kind of work with the front and the back together. So for the back, we just need a cylinder. That's all we need. So I'm gonna introduce a cylinder and move it over here. And let's go to set the subdivision axis to 12, radius to one point. 25 in this case. The reason I'm doing 1.25 instead of 1.3 like we did for this is because I want this specific cylinder to intersect this area right here and fit nicely and hide itself intersecting this area, this cylinder in the front. Uh, I'm not going to try to use booleans or anything like this. I'm just simply going to move the cylindrical piece and just intersect it and hide it to make it look like it's one part. This is a piece of geometry that will never be seen. The camera will never get up close. So the reason you know you, you might be zooming in into your reference, trying to dupl duplicate all this detail, but if the player is never going to see it, if the camera will never get up close, you just need to fake the illusion that there's detail there, that it's actually 
infused together like it should be in real world, but never, nobody's ever going to see it, so you just need to fake it. So that's what I'm going to do. And uh, because they cannot be the same amount of cylinder, because you're going to see the cylindrical part showing through if we intersect it, that's why I'm making it smaller. So I want to keep the cylinder for later, so I'm going to just move it and I'm going to make a duplicate of it. And I'm just going to position it where it needs to go, right back here. Let's rotate it, like so. Select the birds at the top, and I'm just going to move them all the way to the top until they intersect, kind of hide themselves inside here. And I'm actually, I'm going to also rotate it slightly so it's easier to hide. Then let's go to front view to make sure that it's kind of aligned and positioned right there, right behind this leg. And now let's take a look at the very top. I'm going to select the birds. Just let's zoom in. So that's looking pretty good. I just need to make sure that it's uh, aligned a little bit better. So let's go ahead and just move it. And uh, the way I'm moving it without a dragon is I, I have one of the axes already selected. So it's the X axis that's highlighted. It's in yellow. That means that that's the only one that's active. And then by zooming in close here, I can middle mouse click and drag anywhere on screen and it will only move it on, the, on that highlighted axis. And that way I can just see it if it's being hidden and I can see a tiny little gap right there. Let's go inside this geometry and actually I'm going to, let's delete the faces here at the top. Let's uh, delete them and I'm going to select all the verts and let's actually move it more. I just want to make sure that it's positioned right in there. I don't want those verts to show and this one is showing through. So you can see if we had 1.3 cylinder radius we would not be able to hide this. So I'm actually going to select the verts and just force it by scaling slightly in at the very top. So this is what it looks like. And then now from the camera or from the player's point of view, nobody will ever see any, any type of detail here that it's actually intersecting in the geometry. So we don't need to use booleans or anything like this to make a quick little adjustment to this small prop. Then let's go and uh, combine everything. Actually, before I combine, let's uh, set all of these edges right here on the side to a soft edge. And also do the same thing for all the other edges here. Because uh, if I switch over to a non-shaded mode, you can see that we have a problem with all the edges here that are hard edges. So let's switch over to edge. I'm going to select all of these edges here. And actually all of them except for the ones in the corners and in the very bottom. So the ones here, the ones that are in blue, are not highlighted, not selected, those will remain a hard edge. So let's set them all to a soft edge. And uh, let me just double check here at the top, I just saw a face. So let me, let me select it. Let's uh, select this face and delete them. Seems like it was left over from the deletion well, from the mirror. All right, now that looks nice and smooth. Let's go ahead and combine these two. So it is one single object. And also I'm going to delete this edge. I don't need it. Control delete. Just kind of noticed it. We don't need it. I'll probably delete some of those two. And actually let's do that now. Control delete that one. Actually uh, that looks like it's, it's going to make that straight. So I just need to make a slight adjustment to this uh, bottom piece. So I'm actually going to select the faces. And I am able to also do the same thing. So even though the objects are combined, I can still modify them and move that selected piece of geometry by selecting the faces, highlighting that same axis, and just moving the faces just so they're inside and overlapping, like so. All right, that's looking good. You can uh, delete this edge right here as well. I'll probably keep that one though, because that's where the curvature begins. All right, so that's fixed. Now, for the next part, we need to introduce the extra little detail on the very bottom that we see here. This is going to be very simple by simply uh, including an extra edge, then taking those faces and extruding them out, angling an edge, and to kind of give that illusion that there's a little extra plastic piece on the metal that you see in the metal folding chairs. So for this, let's go to front view and uh, let's adjust, let's fix the back leg. Select the verts. I'm going to scale them down and then just simply 
snap them to the bottom, to the ground plane. Then we need to make a cut. So uh, I want to make a cut in front and the back at the same time, so they're the same distance. If I use straight up multi-cut, I would have to do this on both sides. And then that, that's going to be hard to line them up. Multi-cut can also cut instead of inserting edges. The way you do this is simply left click, hold and drag outside your mesh, across your mesh, and then hold shift to create a straight line. That will create a cut across. And whatever you had that line placed, that's where the cut will be created. So left click outside your mesh, left click, hold and drag, hold shift for a straight line. And here's our cut, same exact distance on both sides. Now there, it's a little too high, but if I select those verts and I can slide those verts along the cylindrical part of where they are. So if I just simply move them down, it's going to destroy our shape. But if I hold down control shift and then middle mouse click and drag, this will slide them along and keep the shape of the, uh, of uh, those verts. It'll basically slide along maintaining the shape of our object. Control shift middle mouse click is amazing to slide components. You can do this to vertices as well as edges. So now that's going to be our uh, little extra piece of geometry that we are able to extrude. So now we have those faces to select. And we can go ahead and uh, control E to extrude them. And uh, we should be able to do this to both sides. It's going to, uh, if we use thickness or local translate Z, you can see that's kind of destroying the shape as we are extruding because it's taken the local space of uh, the normals of the faces are pointing. But I can use this and then just tweak it and just uh, force those edges to be more straight. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm simply going to use either thickness or local translate Z. Uh, let's do um, 0.5. That should be good. A little extra detail. We don't need too much. Now let's go back to edge component mode and uh, just then work these. By sele let's select the bottom verts here. Just scale them. So that's done. Let's do the same thing on this side. Scale them and they're flat. And then let's take all these verts and also scale them. Now they're flat. And then I'm simply going to take this edge right here at the top and move it down to create that slight angle. It's moving it down in world instead of a component level. So what if I wanted to actually move it down like this? I can force it or I can go to move component mode, the tool, double click on it, go to move settings and uh, change axis orientation from world to component and see if that works. Yep, and I did. Now I actually don't like the way it's doing it. So uh, let's go back to our world. So I'm actually gonna just force it like this, just drag it. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. Double click on this edge and I'm just gonna drag it down like so. So here's what we have. A little extra piece of detail on the bottom. Let's uh, get rid of our wireframe and so we can see it. Now in the reference, um, these little pieces in the bottom, they're kind of angled out a little bit more, like so. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to keep them straight. So I'm going to keep them as they are. So as long as I have the little piece of geometry, I'm good. That, that's going to be just as good. Again, we're not creating photorealistic folding chair. This is for a game, for an environment that's not going to be seen up close. Uh, the closest we're ever going to get to it by the player is uh, right here, by looking down on the chair. So all that detail on the bottom, we don't need to make it perfect. Next, let's do a little bit of extra detail here. Uh, just maybe uh, one of these little latches and maybe another extrusion with another cut of faces and maybe extrude those out. Let's uh, introduce some of that. So let's see over here. Let's go ahead and uh, go to uh, edge component mode. Let's introduce a cut right there. Uh, or we can do a cut that's straight. Let's uh, let's try maybe a, a more of a, a straight cut. So instead of uh, using insert edge mode, I'm simply going to do the same thing by left click, hold and drag in a straight line, hold shift to make it straight. And then I can select these faces right here. Now, if I go ahead and extrude them, um, that's going to create a problem because uh, let's, if we extrude, that's going to 
create that little addition right there at the top and that's not what I want. However, um, if I just create another line across here by using multi-cut, let's actually uh, drag, I'm gonna left click hold and drag across here, right there. I mean, let's make it a little more straight, right there. So now I have these faces right here and I can extrude them and add some thickness to it. And let's maybe do a slight offset like so. And that does not look good, but we can modify it for a little further. Let me hold control. Uh, whenever you use control and you're trying to drag these sliders, it's going to give you a little bit more control of uh, the amount, uh, like it goes into a decimal. So if you don't, if you just simply left click, hold and drag, you can see that it's just changing a single decimal. By holding down control, it gives you two decimals to control. It's a little more fine tuning whenever you use a slider, especially for small areas. So let's do a point two. Let's go back to object mode and just zoom out. And that's kind of what I wanted to create. So we can modify our vertices further. I'm actually going to rotate this just to make sure that it's hidden inside and just kind of tweak this a little bit more. Let's maybe select these and just kind of move them up and just take a look from afar. Here we go. Nice little latch, a little extra piece of geometry that uh, makes it a little bit more natural. And then last, I want to create uh, the two little pieces of geometry that kind of hold this and this together. And it's uh, this, these two pieces right here. So we just need to create one. We'll duplicate it for the other. And uh, I think we just need a cube, maybe round out those edges at the at both uh, ends and uh, call it done. So let's introduce a cube and I'm just going to move it up here. Let's make it smaller. Let me introduce, uh, bring back the template so I can see where the chair will be, the, the seat. So I know how far I need to kind of move that down. Let's go to side view. I'm going to make that bigger, make it thicker, make it like so. Let's uh, rotate it. Let's make it smaller. Actually, let's keep it straight at first. Let's just align it because the front is going to be here and then we'll raise the back a little bit higher. Uh, then let's make the thickness correct. It's fairly small. Let's go to side view like so. All right, and uh, now let's make it smaller even still. Let's take these vertices and uh, we'll move them up. And they kind of need to touch the back leg. And let's move that back like so. So the front is uh, kind of touching to uh, make it appear in the illusion that it's already kind of latched on there. And all I need to do is uh, introduce a bit of a curvature in the front and the back. So it's not uh, so angular. And we just need to switch over to edge, select these edges in the front and the back, and then bevel them. Let's do two segments. Actually, maybe, yeah, let's do two segments and a bigger fraction. And that we should be able to get away with uh, with this, like so. And uh, the front, or the front is a little bit bigger. Let's uh, select the back and let's just scale it down. And then inside view, just adjust it. Kind of move it up. Maybe make this one a little bit bigger, make it a little bulkier. And then let's get rid of the wireframe unshaded. Take a look at the shape. Let me remove my blackout. So that's what it's going to look like on both sides. Yeah, let's take these uh, verts right here and move them back even more. And then maybe even still just kind of get that smaller thinner. Now I do want to quickly optimize this so that I can duplicate it on the other side because we are going to eventually combine everything and mirror. So let me control one to isolate select. Let's do a quick optimization by selecting the verts and instead of using multi cut to cut, I'm simply going to select the verts, hold shift, right click, hold, go to connect components. And I'm going to do this for all these sides and I'm pressing G to repeat the last use command, which is connect components. Find that 
shortcut, sometimes a lot quicker than using the multi-cut to cut across. All right, control one, we bring it back. Let's uh, delete history and everything. Kind of periodically, you should always delete history. All right, so uh, the distance again, the distance is going to be from back here. So I don't need to introduce a little bolts like we see in the reference. We don't need to introduce any cylinders. That's all we really need right there. So if I just take this and duplicate it for the other side, control D and just make my slight adjustments. Uh, and actually I want this to be almost, uh, let's see. I just want to make sure that it's uh, kind of touching both sides. So because this is angled, uh, we move the verts here in the back. I'm going to take this one and I'm going to um, scale use negative one scale so it's going to kind of flip the entire piece of geometry and that way i can just uh, i don't have to adjust those verts i almost like it's almost like duplicating and then mirroring by doing negative scale on the specific axes kind of it flips the geometry uh, it makes a quick duplicate and flips it all right here we go here's what we got so far and now all we need to do is uh, combine everything and mirror. So I'm going to select it all. Let's do combine. And again, before you combine and mirror, uh, double check everything. Like right now on the bottom, we don't have any geometry here. So might as well just go ahead, go ahead and close that off. So let's select and uh, select those uh, edges. And I can go to mesh fill hole. We can also uh, go ahead and optimize this before we duplicate it for the other side as well as in the back. So let's uh, quickly do an optimization so I don't have to do it on both sides like so. For this, uh, the quickest way to do this is uh, just do our connect components like so. Connect here, connect here. Uh, for the top right there, let's uh, do a multi-cut here to here and then select the edges right there and remove them control delete and let's remove these and make sure that they are straight on the bottom and they are let me double check that's our curve right there I just kind of saw it that's our curve so again uh, I'm keeping that one just in case it's a good idea to put it on its own layer. And here for the back, um, a lot of times this right here, uh, a float invert on a flat face, that doesn't create any problems. Uh, it is a good idea to clean that up. So let's delete that, all the all those edges, control delete, and just simply use connect component and uh, reconnect these in a different way. Kind of makes that a little bit more cleaner, neater geometry. Like so. Let's go ahead and combine everything. And we are ready to mirror this to the other side. Let me delete history. The object is selected. Uh, we need to check. So we are going to mirror on world origin. Uh, all I need to do is make sure that these verts are at the world origin at the zero zero zero. And then I also have no faces there. So it's an open edge. Now let's take this geometry, let's go to Mesh, Mirror, Options. Uh, the options are going to be the same. It's going to be Mirror Axis World on X and Negative Mirror Direction. And let's mirror. Let's remove wireframe unshaded. And just see what the detail looks like. That looks very good. Yeah, that's very nice. Let's create the seat. Let me bring back that template. And I'm going to introduce a cube. Let's go ahead and raise it up. Let's go to front view and make it larger on X as well as on Z. Like right about there. Let me take a look at the perspective. And let's push it forward. Actually, let's make it uh, smaller, like so. The front of the seat is about uh, the same distance as the front legs, and the back is right about there. So actually, let me switch over to vertices. 
and I'm just gonna move the birds back a little bit and these right here let's move them also kind of a little further away so that's gonna be our seed area the thickness looks pretty good let's lower this to match our template and let's make it a little bit thicker all right let's zoom out and take a look overall that's pretty good size now let me make a duplicate of this actually first let me delete history freeze transformations i'm going to make a duplicate move it over here just in case i need to come back uh, because now we're going to curve around and bevel the corners to get the curvature of the seat uh, the curvature in the front seems uh, a bit more drastic there's more curved area here than there is in the back so let's deal with the front first i'm going to select these two edges and this is why it's good to make a copy once you have a block out kind of right before you do anything drastic to it such as extrusions bevels or anything else that's kind of hard to get back just pick a copy of that geometry and then uh, begin to do whatever you need to do modeling wise so if you mess up instead of trying to undo or fix it you just simply delete it and retry it again by bringing that old geometry piece back let's go ahead and bevel these two corners let's give uh, three segments and a smaller fraction I'm going to hold down control so I can kind of more fine-tune precision for the fraction. And actually, let's do four segments. And let me just take a look. I'm going to get rid of the wireframe, zoom out, and I think that's pretty good. Let's do the same thing for the back, uh, but for the back, uh, it'll be a lot less. So let's do control B for this, uh, a lot smaller fraction, maybe something like this, and let's do two segments yep that's looking pretty good uh, let's uh, add maybe uh, just a little bit more fraction a little bit more space so I'm gonna bring back the menu that I had hit T it will always bring back the last used floating menu for the modeling command you used and then let's do uh, maybe 0.15 and let's see what it's gonna look like with three segments but I could probably get away with two yeah, actually, let's keep it at two. There's not much of a difference. And now once I have this, I'm going to select the edges at the top and I'm gonna bevel so there's a nice transition. So it's not a 90 degree corner. Um, it's also probably a good idea to maybe right now uh, optimize this, but let's bevel it and then we'll optimize the top and the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and just select all of the edges. It's a little harder to select them now because it's a big end gun at the top. You can't simply just double click on an edge and select the entire edge loop or edge ring. So I'm gonna deal with the top first. Let's bevel this. A smaller fraction, let's do 0.2 and two segments. Some nice transition at the top. Let's actually do a little bit more. I mean, we select it, bring the menu back. Let's do a fraction of 0.3. Yeah, that's looking pretty nice and for the bottom i'm not going to do any type of any sort of bevel we'll just leave it as flat because we're never going to see any of that geometry on the bottom of the chair unless we flip it but i'm just going to leave it as is uh, if i wanted to add a bit of geometry let's say we decided to f at some point flip the chair maybe it's fallen over you never know how you would use it in the future or maybe when you give it to somebody else they may want to do that uh, so actually let's go ahead and select this face and instead of trying to do any type of bevel usually there is a bit of space it's a bit of a border and then that entire face is extruded in so let's do that i'm gonna control e to extrude and i'm gonna do an offset for this like so and now let's go to front view and i'm gonna extrude again and add some thickness like so so here's what we have a bit of extra geometry on the bottom so that's going to look pretty good if we ever need to flip that chair. So we'll have that ability to do so. Now let's optimize it. So I'm going to control one to isolate, select this. And I'm going to use the connect components. It's a little bit faster to do this. Not all the time, but in this case, it's a lot faster. Uh, Multi-cut, you just have to cut, make sure that it's not cutting across your geometry on the other side. Sometimes it tries to grab a few vertices that you may not want to grab. So I sometimes find the connect components is a lot faster. Let's do the same thing on the bottom. So after you've selected 
and applied whatever modeling operation you want, pressing G to repeat the last use command. Super quick, you don't have to go into the any menus anymore, you just select the verts, press G and repeat kind of components. Let's go ahead and delete history, bring everything back. All right, so here's what we have so far. Uh, one thing I want to check is, uh, let's go to the top, is make sure that the, these, the chair of the leg and the seat are touching. And it looks like they are. Yep, they are touching, so they are connected. I don't want any space back there. Let's go to the top and just check. Yep, here, here's the back. So those are touching. Perfect. All right, that's looking good. Next, let's do the back of the seat. We need a cube. And actually, let me bring this one back because I no longer need to do anything with this. I'm happy with the way it looks. So I'm just going to use this. Let's bring it back to where it was because we forced transformations. And I'm just going to scale this one down. Let's go to side view and use this to create that back portion. So I'm going to scale this significantly because it's very thin and it's going to be positioned between those two cylinders. And let's make it bigger. And let's move it up here to the top. Let's go to top view. And I just need to position that to be right inside and to get the right thickness down as well. So that's going to go right in here, uh, intersecting the top, the top portion. Let's bring it back down right about there. And then let's select the bottom vertices and I'm going to move them right over here to create that portion. And I just want to make sure that uh, the verts right here are hidden inside because they need to be inside the geometry so we can uh, hide. And they are. They're inside so they're not going to be peeking through. So we're not going to have any gaps here. And I'm just trying to get that thickness down. Let me select again. Let me make sure I have it selected. I don't like that angle so I want to grab these verts and just kind of just make sure that that's a more of a straight edge. Let's go to the top. The top doesn't matter because that's going to be hidden. But I just want to position it so it's right in the center of that cylinder. And just kind of uh, try to be aware of the thickness of this. So let's make it a little bit bigger and go back to the top and also adjust it. Could have scaled this entire thing, but for such a piece, a small piece of geometry, I'm just going to move in it. And now I need to curve these corners and I need to bevel them so they can be hidden inside the, the cylindrical piece. So let's go to edge, select this edge, select the other edge, let's bevel. Let's go to front view so I can see it. And let's adjust the fraction. And let's add two segments. And let's adjust the fraction even more. Let me press control to for fine precision adjustment. And let's see, make sure that it is hidden inside that cylinder. It's kind of a little, let's uh, take uh, these verts right here and just raise them up just to make sure that they are inside that cylinder at the top. All right, now let me go ahead and observe everything if uh, it's looking pretty good and it does. In the reference, we have a slight adjustment right there. So I want to have that in my model as well. So I'm going to isolate, select this. And uh, let's, and I'm thinking since this is an ungon, it's not going to allow me to insert an edge. So I might have to cut this or I will have to um, optimize this first. So let's actually optimize it. I'm going to select this, these two verts and uh, let's connect components for those. Connect for uh, these two right here. And let's do the same thing for the back. And right there. And now let me use multi-cut. Now press control, middle mouse click, so it's right in the center. And it should be in the center. And I don't think it created, yep, it created one in the back as well, cool. That's what I wanted, so that's correct. And then I want to insert two more on each side. So let's do multi-cut, press control, middle mouse click, middle mouse click, so it's in the center. And then let's, in front view, take these or in perspective view, take all of these and we're going to move them up. 
However, I want to move them up so they are on the same plane. So moving them up in the world space, that's not going to work. Let me try my trick with control shift, middle mouse click and drag to see if we can raise this up and kind of slide along the direction where those verts are sitting. So that seems like it's working. Yep, that worked pretty well. And now let me select the middle ones, control shift and middle mouse click. And those are, that's not working. So uh, let me try going into move tool, into the move tool settings and change the axis orientation to component. And I should be able to just move them up and they'll retain that direction. So perfect, that worked. So in some cases, sliding edges or verts on the surface does not work. It worked for the other vertices when they were all together selected, but not for these two when they were selected separately. By changing the axis orientation to component, that worked perfectly. Let me reset the tool for the move tool to get back to go back to the world. Let's bring that back. Let me remove wireframe I shaded. Uh, it's a bit of a, a little bit too angular right over here. So let me select that again. And I'm going to bring that back down. So I already changed this back to world. So if you want to use a shortcut key to get back to changing axis orientation on the fly instead of the menu, hold control, shift, right click hold, and then change to component. And just drag this one a little bit down. And that worked out. Let me go ahead and control one to isolate select. And uh, I want to see if I can maybe add just for the front edges, add a bit of a bevel. So there's a bit of a curvature, uh, but not so much for the back because uh, we're not going to see that edge back here. Um, when you're looking at this, it's, this is kind of a, a bit too super low poly. I don't like how flat this is. And again, from back here, uh, I'm probably not going to see it, but I'm, I am going to add it anyway. So let's go ahead and uh, bevel this edge. And I'm only going to bevel uh, with a very low fraction of uh, probably 0.25 and just one segment. Yeah, and we, we can't tell. That's not a big deal. So I'm actually, not, I'm not going to do it. Such a small piece of geometry. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the faces that are not going to be seen by the player. So these are going to be all hidden. So let's uh, remove them and get rid of them. And let's do this one. Delete, 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 and let's bring everything back. Let's uh, hide the template and just take a look what we have. All right, let's delete history. And I'm just, I'm just going to select everything and press shift, right click hold, soften hard edge and just toggle soft edge display just so I can see if I need to adjust any hard soft edges for anything. And for the seat, yeah, we do. Let's go ahead and select this edge right here all the way around. That's a hard edge. Let's turn it into a soft edge. So with it selected, shift, right click, hold, soften edge. And go back to object mode. That's going to look better. And there's a couple of them uh, right here when we beveled the back. So there's going to be the one, two, one, two. Uh, I'm going to press G to soften it because that's what we last used and everything else is shaded correctly. All right, we are almost done. For the last part of geometry, we just need cylinders for the back and the front. And this is very simple. We just need a cylinder. Let's rotate it 90 degrees. Let's uh, make it bigger. Let's position it where we want it first. It's all gonna be the same cylinder. And actually, let me get the get it smaller and then I'm just going to scale on X and once we create one uh, it's the same size for everything else so the first one is going to be right here in the front let's make it smaller by scaling it on X we don't need 20 segments so bef uh, before we duplicate anything let's adjust that segment and uh, make this subdivision axis to six we can get away with uh, six and because I already scaled, it's actually breaking my object. So uh, we should have set that to begin with. So let me delete it. Let me reintroduce it. Uh, let's rotate it 90 degrees. And let's set our subdivision axis first. Six. It's going to be super low poly, but it's such a small little area. Let me select it again. Zoom in back on it. Uh, it's, we're not going to see it. 
we're not going to see that low poly cylinder. So I'm going to select those and turn those edges to soften edge. And when I turn off wireframe, you can kind of, you can't even tell. And it's going to be, again, it's going to be so small, we won't be able to tell that that's a low poly cylinder. I could go higher, but what, why when we don't need it? Let's position it right there. And now front view, let's scale it all the way out until it overlaps those cylindrical pieces, the legs. All right, that looking pretty good. Let me isolate select, and we need to select, select the faces and the ends and delete them. So I'm gonna utilize the trick by selecting what I don't want, which is uh, the main part of the cylinder that we're gonna see. Then I'm gonna invert my selection. Hold shift, right click hold, marquee select over everything. It's gonna select the two caps and let's delete them. And now we can just duplicate for the back. Control D, let's move this one back. Control D, move this one right about there. And actually let's take uh, this one in the front and maybe lower it like so. Let's take this one in the back if you can't select it and you're selecting something else again, you can invert your selection by holding down shift, marquee select and select what you need. It wasn't allowing me to select that cylinder. So invert selection is a great shortcut key for component mode or object level. All right, that is looking pretty good. So let me lower this down a little bit. Just gonna, I'm looking at the reference and I'm trying to gauge that size, the distance between those two. Let's zoom in. Select this one, make a slight adjustment. Position that one right there, making, select this one again, position it more in the center. And here we go. We have our folded metal chair. Let's combine everything. So it's one piece of geometry. We no longer need that cylinder that I saved from previous attempts when we were doing uh, the legs. So I'm just gonna delete it. Select everything, let's combine it. Delete history. Let's position the pivot point at the world origin on the ground level. It's gonna be easier to place that chair from uh, from that position. Plus that's where it's gonna get exported from. So let's snap it to the bottom at the world origin. That's gonna be our position because we also created this chair right in world origin. So that's easy to snap and move that pivot point. And let's uh, freeze transformations, delete history again. And now we're going to export this, overwrite our template that we imported for testing purposes for the size. Then we're gonna reimport in UU5 to see what the final chair looks like. So let's export selection and let's overwrite our metal chair. Let's go ahead and reimport. I'm gonna right click on this existing asset and I'm gonna reimport it. Let's reposition and re drag it into the level. I'm going to hit F11 for a large view and just take a look at the chair. This is a very nice looking folding metal chair that we can just go ahead and duplicate across our room and use it as a prop. And that is how you model a metal folding chair. Now we went through a lot of tools and techniques very quickly and these let's model episodes expect that you already know how to use Maya. But if you don't and you wanna get better, then take a look at the home study course, Maya Foundation. It'll teach you how to get started with Maya, how to model, and how to EV so you can texture all the props and all the environments you create. Take a look at what's included in the course by visiting the link to the course in the description box. And you'll find the link on the website if you are there watching this video as well.